Welcome to the channel everyone. This video I'm going to talk about a piece of equipment that everybody technician should own and that's a port of power. It's a portable hand powered hydraulic jacking system and this is something that I don't know how technicians get by without. I bought this years ago. I've probably been in a trade for a year or two and I bought this and uh, it's it's gotten me out of jams and helped me along so much over the years. Like I said, I don't know how I would have got along without it. And the problem with these now, the only thing I'm seeing online, with the exception of one company, is I haven't been able to find a Blackhawk anymore to compare prices or get parts or anything. But everything is these Chinese knockoffs. And you can get this four ton set for about $125. And a couple years ago, my pump went out, finally wore out after 40 some years. And I did manage to find a Blackhawk Porta Power pump. I think I bought it from Northern Tools, and I believe it was somewhere right around $300. So that's more than twice of what the cost is just to buy one of those Chinese kits. And I kicked around the idea of just buying one of those because, uh, you know, just the cost and how much more use I'm going to get out of it. So while mine was out of commission, I borrowed one from a guy that I worked with, used his, and I don't know how people get, a, get by with them. The quality is pretty poor. The attachments don't work all that good. The pumps don't work that good. So I just figured I'd just spend the $300, buy a good pump, and then about a year later, my RAM goes out. It started leaking pretty good. And I've had the old one replaced or actually rebuilt probably twice over the last 40 years, and I can't find anybody anymore to rebuild these, so I had to find a new one. Once again, I couldn't find a Blackhawk. Even Northern, they sell the pump, but no RAM. So I did get a, an OTC. An OTC's been around a long time. I've used a lot of their stuff, usually 10 tons on frame machines, uh, the pumps, the RAMs, and it is a good, good hydraulic system. I've never had any issues with OTC. And even that, I know I probably paid about the same of what those Chinese complete kits go for. That was probably 120 bucks for the RAM, but they work great. So I'm going to show you a couple of different attachments, or actually a bunch of different attachments that come with them. Some I bought extra, how they work, some of the limitations. And stick around in this video towards the end. I'm going to show you a modification and some tricks I did with this. And a modification I don't know if anybody even knows about anymore. I learned it from old timer, so stick around for that. So right off the bat, I'm going to show you this. Now this is a four ton unit, like I said. Turn this valve, make sure it's in a closed position. And I believe there's about maybe eight or nine inches of travel in these. And one of the things you have to watch out for, what's really hard on these rams, you don't want to have that, oh, that's about it, maybe about five, six inches a, a throw there. Try not to use this with that ram all the way extended or close to the end. If you're down about three quarters of your travel is used up and you're still pushing pretty hard, you're going to bend this. There's a lot of stress in here, and that's usually what makes these seals go out. But you'll, you can actually see this thing start flexing. And with all the different extensions they got on here, or they come with these, you can put extensions on there and keep this ram down within the first couple of inches. Now they make all different lengths extensions here. It's probably about a three inch all the way to about a 24, 26. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six different extensions here. And the way these things are measured and, and cut or built, you'll never run into a situation where it's too long, it won't fit, or it's too short and you can't get enough throw. With all these different extensions, you can always mix and match and you can fit this into any kind of area you want without running into a situation where the ram is maxed out and you need another half an inch. Run it down, take the parts off or the extensions off, put different ones in there and you can make your length work what you need. So, 
I don't know if these new ones are coming with that many extensions. This one came with, like I said, all of these, six of them here. And they'll probably extend, if I put them on all together, it'd probably be about six foot tall. So these things are just great for all kinds of stuff. And I'm gonna show you some of the stuff you can do with them. Now, here's an attachment. If you take this cap off of here, the top of this is threaded. And if you've got one of these, make sure that cap stays on, protect these threads. It's got this attachment here. That screws onto there, and that's why you gotta keep your threads protected. You don't wanna booger these things up and get them locked up or stripped. And you can get in there, it's about an inch, inch and a quarter area that you can fit that into. And that works real nice for getting into tight spots. That works a little bit better than the wedge. Okay, the wedge attachment, just like the name implies, it's a wedge. And if you get a real tight area that you fit this into, sometimes it can slide out. So this here seems to work a little bit, bit better, and I've used this thing countless times. It'll get you out of jams where you're trying to figure out how to repair something, get something opened up or pressure in the right spot. And you can, depending on how much pressure you're gonna put on it, you can thread this up a little bit, be careful. You don't wanna run it off the top of it, but you can get these a little bit closer, but the only thing, you don't have it threaded all the way down. So you don't wanna use it for a lot of pressure. So try and keep that all the way down, use all the threads, but this thing just works great. Another ram I've got, and I think I had to buy this separate years ago, and I know probably 40 years ago, 35 years ago, that was still probably about $150. But this is a little shorter one. That's only got about a three inch travel on it. It's got an extendable top here, just like a hydraulic bottle jack. You can run that top out. Okay, what I did on this, this piece here, this top cap, was just a little bit oversized to fit in the attachment, so I ground it down and it didn't need much, but I can put on different attachments if I need to. It's all kinds of different things, but this is a real handy ram. And probably one of my most favorite is this little one here, and that's only about maybe an inch of travel. Now this is a Porter Ferguson, and that's the other unit that I said, I found that online, I did a search, and Porter Ferguson's been around forever. They make a real good Porter power system, but they're expensive, and I think it's probably still built the old way. It's all American made, I'm thinking, for the price, but it's $2,200. If you're gonna make a career out of this for the next 30, 40 years, it's probably a pretty good investment. I think when I bought my set back in 78, I probably gave four or $500 for it. So probably with inflation, it's about the same price. But here's the other thing. I see guys that go out and spend $10,000 on a toolbox, don't have any tools in them, and it looks all pretty, but I think I would rather make investment in tools and get the job done right, get them done faster. Anyway, that's just my thought on that. But Porter Ferguson, like I said, they've been around forever. They make a real good Porter Power. And one thing about Porter Ferguson, I was looking online and they sell repair kits for their cylinders. So like my Blackhawk, I had to find somebody the last couple times have it rebuilt and that was kind of tough. I had to ship it out, wait for it to come back. And I see that Porter Ferguson makes the kit. I don't know what they're like to put together, but uh, to take them apart and rebuild them, but our parts available. So that's, that's a plus right there. Here's an attachment here, and I don't know if guys know what this is, but I'll show you how it works in a minute. But what this does, that's for running a chain over it, and you could do a vector pull. You could have both ends of the chain anchored to something. They could come out at an angle with the ram in the, underneath it. And if you buy those Chinese sets, this does not come with it. And if you had to buy this separate, I don't think you'd have any luck finding it. And Porter Ferguson does have that available. This goes into here. Your chain will run through here, 
over the top of that and back out the other side. So this actually pulls. You run your chain out both ways, and I'll demonstrate this here in a few minutes. You run your chain out both ways, and when you pump that, it comes up and it tightens it, so you're actually pulling both ways with the chain, and that's real handy. If you're doing something on the floor, you're not on a frame rack and you've got to move something, uh, squeeze a couple rails together, a couple millimeters or something, but that is real handy for all kinds of stuff. I've used it quite a bit. You put a bedside on a truck, a complete bedside, inner and outer, and you're always trying to get it so it matches the tailgate and you're trying to pull it in. And you can take a ratchet strap and hook from the other side and come up to the top, but you can't fine tune it. A ratchet strap is gonna be, you know, maybe three eighths of an inch in increment every time you click it, where the port of power you can just squeeze it in there and if you need a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch and hold it right there in place while you weld it. So this thing here is probably one of the most indispensable pieces that come with this set just because of the, the versatility and what you can do with it. So I'm going to hook up some stuff here, put some stuff on the front of this car and show you how some of this stuff works. Alright, so here's a generic example of how these port of powers work. Say, for example, I've got this car here, it was on a frame rack, and the frame rails were over six, eight millimeters. I pulled them back in the line, everything measures up, and I'm going to change the core support. So I go to put the new core support in, and it's tight, it won't fit in here. So I only need a millimeter or two, I want to spread these out. So I'm going to use my port of power in between the frame rails to push these apart. Now on the opposite end on this ram, it's hollow in here and you have to have an adapter to go in there that comes with the kit you put that in there and we're gonna put this wide base on there now between this base and this foot these are probably the attachments I use about 90 percent of the time so now we just have to build our extensions to fit in between here so I'm gonna start with this one here and we need about five or six inches in there. Actually, that was a pretty good guess because that fits in there perfect. It said there's only about a quarter inch gap in there. So, hold that in position. And we can just push that apart and it's not going to take a whole lot of power just to move it a couple millimeters. We're not really trying to bend the frame here, we're just trying to get a little bit of clearance and you're just going to spring it open a little bit. So that's one of the many things you can do with it. Anywhere you need to get some pushing power to open something up, this and if it fits in there, it works great. So I'm going to show you how it works by using a chain attachment and pulling these rails together as if they're too far apart. Make sure this chain isn't twisted as it comes through here. You want that thing to come up and go out the same way it started. Twist is just going to bind up and it's probably going to lock up inside of here. We're going to take these frame hooks. One on each side.
and we can pull them together just like that. And once again, this thing has countless uses for it. There's all kinds of stuff. You're always trying to pull together, keep something held in place while you're welding it or getting a rail lined up or core support or something. And like I said, I don't know how technicians get by without this kind of equipment. So I'm going to show you now the modification that I did on the duck bill and talk a little bit about straight kinks in frame rails. Okay, here's a modification I did on this. And like I said, this is an old timer's trick. I took my wedge and I drilled and tapped a hole in there and that's a 3 8 by, I believe, 16 thread, coarse thread. And you take a bolt thread into there with a nut on it. And you can use this to get into places where you've got just a nice little tight spot you want to push on. Or maybe an extension and put a plate up in here to, you know, fill in a gap. Yeah, if you want to slide this inside a frame rail and work on a kink and you want to just get in one little area, this works good and not just on frame rails about anywhere where you want to push where you kind of need a nice little hard or a tight area to push on you can put different size bolts in there different lengths whatever you need but make sure you put a nut on that bolt you don't want to rely just on the threads in here to do all the holding power so you put that nut on there that backs up against the plate here and that works out real good. You can, like I said, you can put long bolts. The only thing you have to watch, you put a too long a bolt on here, you're probably going to bend it because when you open that, it doesn't push straight. It's got like an arc to it. And you really don't want to put it on the back side because that's where your holding surface is. If you're trying to hold it with this side and push over here, same thing. That wants to roll a little bit, but I said that's a, that's an old timer's trick. I don't know if anybody knows about this anymore. I've never seen anybody else do that. But here's another trick I've got. Got a half inch nut. And I'm going to tape that to it. Right on one edge. taped over on the edge and I'm going to show you what this is for okay back again on the eraser board because I don't have a car here that I can show you the end of a rail but if you got a frame rail and you got it swung over to one side and you've got a slight kink now this is on a repairable rail and you want to use your porta power and your wedge to get in there at the same time you're pulling the problem is you can never get to these corners they'll kink a little bit underneath a little on top and you can get probably three quarters of this straightened out where you need it, but those corners are always tough. So that's why I take and I tape that nut to it, slide that in there, and that nut is just going to concentrate up in this corner and put pressure on there while you're pulling on that rail. You can work that one out, then I'll take and move it down to the bottom here, slide it in there, and it works real good. It's about the only thing I found that I can get in there and get those kinks out of there. This little Porter Ferguson ram, that's what it's built for, for frame repair. And you can slide that in there. Usually, since it's so short, you got to back it up with some steel plates to fill the gap. But where this ram comes out, it's still, oh, about 5 sixteenths away from the, from the end of this collar, from the edge. And then with the base being even wider, you're still limited. You're going to be hitting right down here. Now, sometimes you can turn it around and use the back side to push against, but it's still got a little bit of a tape or two. You can never get it right up in a corner. It'll get quite a bit, and it does have more power than these. These are still only rated, I think, about a ton and a half, where the regular Rams are four tons. So you're, you're kind of limited the press you can get, but when you confine it to a nice little tight area, such as the upper and lower corners there, they work great. They'll move that because the, the, the pressure is being concentrated. So, so that's a couple of my little hacks there. One with the nut and one with the, uh, the bolt threaded into there. 
but that would even work and you could move it up and down you can put your wedge inside there and you could use that bolt and do a little at a time if you want if that works for you so. all right there's a basic rundown on a port of power system now if you don't have one you're thinking about buying one you have to justify how much use you're going to get out of it if you're a hobbyist you're messing around at home with stuff those import ones may be what you're looking for but if you're going to do this for a living make a career out of it you know you have to seriously think spending the big bucks to get a good one and only you can make that decision but those things are built to last a lifetime and my kind of way of thinking is people go spend a thousand dollars for a flat screen tv and five years later it's junk you're throwing it away or there's a new and better one that you want to you want to buy so you kind of have to look at what you're going to do with it over how long it's going to last you and how much use you're going to get out of it but like i said that's your decision. So, I hope this video was helpful. Hope you learned a few tricks and tips. And uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.